Hello everyone. Welcome to Brilliant Bankers. In today's session, we will be discussing about the automatic teller mission, which is chapter 4 of the course in certificate exam for digital banking. Here we will be totally dealing about all the things re regarding the ATMs, what is the use of this, what are the different type of ATMs that are being used. Let's start off with the history of the ATMs. Coming to the history, it dates back to the mid 20th century and these machines have played a specific have played a significant role in transforming the way people access and manage their money regarding the concept conceptualization it was the late 1960s when this concept of a machine that could provide cash to the bank customers outside of the regular banking hours that started so the concept was started in the late 1960s and the idea was to create a self-service solution that could perform the basic banking transaction without the need of a human teller person. That is earlier the cashier or the cash disbursement was only done during the period of the banking house. So to disperse cash after the banking house, this concept of the automatic teller machine was started. The first ATM. It was installed by the Barclays Bank in Enfield, London on June 27th of 1967. This machine known as the Barclays Automatic Cash Dispenser allowed customers to withdraw a maximum of £10 a time by inserting a special voucher that was issued by the bank. So this was the first ATM that was installed and it was installed by the Barclays Bank in Enfield, London. It was installed by Barclays Bank in Enfield, London. Coming to the expansion of the same ATM network, the main expansion was in the, uh, in the 1970s. Following the successful installation of the first ATM, banks worldwide began to explore and adopt the technology. By the early 1970s, ATMs were introduced in various countries, which included the United States, with the Chemical Bank installing the first ATM in the Rockville Center in New York in 1969 itself. So, after the installation in, by the Barclays Bank in 1967, in US it was installed by the Chemical Bank in the year 1969 and uh, after that in the early 1970s, there was a very big expansion of this network because each and every bank started approaching this process of the automatic teller machines. Coming to the introduction of debit cards. These debit cards, these were initially provided in 1970, which allowed customers to perform the transactions that was beyond just cash withdrawals. The innovation expanded the functionality of the ATMs, enabling users to check their balances, transfer funds and also conduct other banking activities. What was the global ATM network growth type? It was throughout the 1980s and the 1990s. The number of ATMs continued to grow globally. International networks were established, allowing customers to access their accounts from ATMs outside their home countries also, which helped people who are traveling also to use the same ATM network, even if, if they have funds in their home currency. This fun period marked a significant shift towards the integration of the ATMs into a broader banking infrastructure, due to which a widespread adoption of ATM networks was done during the period of 2000 and till current date. The 2000s saw the widespread adoption of ATM as an integral part of the banking experience. ATMs became ambitious, providing 24-7 access to cash and a range of bank services. Advanced futures was also started, such as image-based check deposits and also multifunction ATMs were introduced to enhance the convenience of the customers. How was the integration with the digital banking done? In the recent years, ATMs have been increasingly integrated with digital banking platforms. Customers can initiate the transactions using the mobile apps also and complete them at the ATMs 
blurring the lines between the physical and the digital banking channels. Coming to the enhanced security measures that are available in the ATMs. Over the years, the significant advancements have been made in ATM security to combat fraud and also to ensure that the safety of the futures such as the encrypted pin pads, biometric authentication and the anti-skimming technologies have been introduced. It has also has the contactless and the cardless transactions in recent years, wherein the recent developments include the introduction of contactless and cardless transactions at the ATM. You can use your mobile for using or for any withdrawal or cash deposits at the ATM also nowadays. Customers can use their smartphones or contactless cards to initiate transactions without a physically inserting a card into the machine. Wherein the ATM continue to evolve with ongoing technological innovations, including the artificial intelligence, the machine learning, and the blockchain integration also. These advancements aim to provide more personalized and secure banking experiences for the customers and also for the bank, wherein they are able to provide the customers a very good or secured banking experience. Coming to the futures of the experience or the futures of an ATM, automatic teller machines typically have several features to provide convenient and secure banking services. So some of the common features that are in an ATM are the card reader. The card reader is the uh, reads the information that is stored in the debit or a credit card. This is the primary means of authenticating or authentication of a user. The keypad it's used by the customer to input his PIN or a personal identification number through a keypad to, uh, to access his account. It is also used for different purposes like uh, feeding in the amount required during transactions for all these things. The display screen. ATM has a display screen that provides instructions to the users and show transaction details, account balances and also other relevant information. The cash dispenser. One of the main features or the functions of an ATM machine is to dispense cash. So the users can withdraw money from their bank accounts using the cash dispenser. The deposit functionality. Nowadays, this deposit functionality has been stopped from all the ATMs. It is being used in the CDMs. So earlier, there was a provision in ATM wherein an uh, envelope was being placed in each and every ATM and you can uh, deposit cash up to an amount of 40 notes in the envelope and write down the account number and then deposit the same in the ATM. The function is still available but it is not being used. Many ATMs allow users to deposit cash or checks into their accounts. This often involves inserting the funds into an envelope that is provided by the ATM. The receipt printer. After completing a transaction, the ATM prints a receipt for the user. This receipt typically includes details such as a transaction amount, account balance, and the date and time of the transactions. There are also different function buttons that are available in the ATM. Like that of uh, selecting different services such as the balance inquiry, fund transfer, bill payment, and others. The card slot. This is where the users insert their debit or a credit card for authentication of the of self-authentication. The other features are the ca cash and the deposit slots. These are the slots where the users insert cash or checks for deposit or receiving dispensed cash. The contactless technology. Some modern ATMs support contactless transactions also allowing users to tap their ca cards or mobile devices for authentication instead of inserting a card. The security features. ATMs are equipped, equipped with security cameras and sometimes additional security measures are also used to ensure the safety of the users and their transactions also. You can also select different languages that is language selection. ATMs often offer language options for users to choose their preferred language for the transaction. It also has accessibility features like ATMs may, ha may have features such as audio assistance and tactile keypads to make them accessible to individuals with disabilities also.
there is a very good network connectivity wherein the atms are connected to banking networks to provide transactions in real time and provide the up to date account information and the, nowadays there are limitations in transactions also so transaction limitation there are usually limits on the amount of money that can be withdrawn or deposit in a single transaction depending on the bank and the type of the account that is being maintained by the customer so what are the benefits of an atm the main benefits of the atm are it can be used 24/7 so it provides a 24/7 service there is a privacy in transactions also because it's being said only one person at a time in an atm whether this happens or not but this is what is being said in a atm only one person can enter at a time the services are quicker and efficient because the customer need not go to the bank fill up the withdrawal form or uh, give the check wait for the cashier to count and give the in this process the check moves in two or three directions when finally the cash is being dispersed in this condition in an atm whenever the customer goes with his card with his debit or credit card his authentication starts over uh, and on entering his pin his cash is being dispersed it's mostly error free it has a flexibility in cash withdrawals also has a fun transfer facilities and the anywhere anytime banking facility these are the main benefits of an atm so what are the different types of atm based on the location in india atms are deployed in various locations to serve the diverse banking needs of the population different type of atms in india are based on the locations where they are placed they are called the on site atms off site atms work site atms and the mobile atms so what are on site atms these are atms that are located on the premises of a bank branches making them easily accessible to the customers who are visiting the branch so the customer can directly go to the atm instead of the bank for any withdrawal purpose offsite atms offsite atms are not located in the premises of a bank branch so any atm that is not in the premises of a bank is called offsite so any atm that is in the premise of a bank is called onsite and offsite atms are located are outside the premises of the bank they are strategically placed in high traffic areas in commercial centers markets and other locations for the convenience of the users so what is a worksite atm it is generally positions in a worksite like the premises of an institution maybe a college or let's take the case of the tcs wipro hcl they may have a atm in their site the defense installations they do have a atm in their a uh, campus so these are all called the work site atms you also have them in the metro stations in the railway stations in airports so these are generally put in a work site like the premises of an institution and are generally meant for the use of the employees of the institution but in the case of the metro stations or the railway stations and the airport the people who are Uh, assessing all these facilities also can use it so what is a mobile atm some banks in india deploy a mobile atm in the forms of vans or trucks these mobile units travel to different locations such as villages small towns and events to provide the banking services so it's worth noting that the availability of the specific type of atms can vary by region and is influenced by the factors such as the population density infrastructure and the banking policies of that bank additionally the advancements in technology may lead to the introduction of new types of atms in the future also but on date as uh, as per the location base on location base there are four types of atms they are the on site that is in the premises of the bank off site off the premises of the bank work site in some work site the word work site is mentioned clearly in some work site in a institution or somewhere and the mobile atms which are mounted on a vehicle coming to the type of atms as per the ownership what is ownership either the atm is owned by the bank or it is owned by a private entity 
Coming to the case of, uh, it is of two types. It's called a white label ATM and a brown label ATM. So what is a white label ATM? A white label ATM is an ATM that is owned and operated by a non-banking entity. These entities are typically independent service providers or companies that specialize in managing and operating the ATMs. White label ATMs are not associated with a specific bank. Instead, they may offer services from multiple banks and financial institutions. The branding on a white label ATM is neutral without any specific bank logos also. It often displays the brand of a independent service provider operating the ATM. I think uh, people would have seen a lot of ATMs like this. The transactions also conducted at the white label ATM are typically processed through sponsor banks and the ATM operator earns revenue through the interchange fees in the case of the white label ATM. Coming to the case of a brown label ATM, a brown label ATM is owned by a third party entity which could be a non-banking company but is operated and maintained by a sponsor bank. The term brown label refers to the fact that the ATM hardware and infrastructure may bear the branding of or colors of the sponsor bank. So automatically all the ATM machines are a private entity are held by entity. And in the case of a white label ATM, it is done by a private entity or a non-banking entity. In the case of a brown label ATM, it is also done by a brown label entity, but there will be a logo of the sponsor bank that has been affixed on the ATM. While the ATM machine and its maintenance are the responsibility of the third party owner, the operational aspects connectivity to the banking network and the cash management are to be handled by the sponsor bank in the case, in the case of the brown label ATM. The transactions that are conducted at the brown label ATM are usually routed through the sponsor bank and the ATM operator earns revenue through a fee sharing arrangement. So what are the difference between the white label and the brown label ATM? In the case of the ownership, in a white label ATM, the ownership lies with a non-banking entity or an independent service provider. In the case of a brown label ATM, the ownership lies with a third party entity, but operational control is maintained by the sponsor bank. On the case of the brand branding in white, white label ATM, there is no specific branding of any bank. But in the case of a brown label ATM, ATMs may carry the branding or the colors of the sponsor bank. So these models have been adopted to enhance the reach of ATMs, especially in areas where it may not be feasible or cost effective for traditional banks to establish and maintain ATMs. What are they? They are the white label ATMs and the brown label ATMs. Coming to the ATM network. So what is the ATM network? A automatic teller machine network refers to a system of interconnected ATMs that allows users to perform various banking transactions such as the cash withdrawal, balance inquiry, further transfers and more of such kind of activities that are being done in an ATM. These networks enable customers to access their bank accounts and conduct financial transactions conveniently often beyond the regular banking hours, which is very helpful for a customer. So this is how a ATM network or a ATM, yeah, ATM network works. It has got, got their own, the network infrastructure. ATMs are connected to a centralized banking network, which is usually maintained by a financial institution or a banking consortium. This network infrastructure facilitates communication between the ATMs and the bank's core banking system by authorization and authentication. Whenever a user inserts their debit or a credit card into an ATM, the card's magnetic strip or chip that contains information about the user's account 
the atm reads the information and communicates with the bank system to verify the user's identity users are typically required to enter a pin number to authenticate themselves so the combination of the card and the pin ensures secure access to the account for the customer a transaction request is being raised after authentication the user selects the desired transaction that is it may be cash withdrawal balance inquiry or a fund transfer situation using the atm interface all these are type of requests that are being raised by the customer or the person who have who has entered the atm communication with the core banking service the atm communicates with the bank's core banking system to request authorization for the selected transaction this net this communication often occurs through a secure network such as the dedicated lease lines or a encrypted internet connection uh, the bank system checks the user's account balance verifies the transaction details and ensures that the user has necessary funds or credit for the requested transaction after which the authorization is done if the transaction is approved the bank sends an authorization code back to the atm authorizing the process of the customer coming to the transaction processing with the received authorization code the atm processes the transaction for cash withdrawals the atm dispenses the requested amount of cash for other transactions the amount amount is updated by the atms or the atm updates the account balance and provides a printed or a on screen receipt of the balance of the amount that is being available in the account record keeping and settlement facilities both the atm and the bank's core banking system maintains record of the transactions these records are crucial for auditing reconciliation and providing accurate statements to the account holders also settlement processes ensure that the financial transactions are properly accounted for between the atm operator and the users bank coming to the network management the atm network requires ongoing management to ensure optimal performance also security and reliability this includes software updates maintenance monitoring for fraud act activities and troubleshooting any issues that may arise at the atm interbank networks since there are a lot of transactions nowadays in interbank networks in many cases atms from different banks are part of interbank networks that allow customers to access their accounts at atms outside their bank's network common interbank networks include the visa the master and the national or the regional networks also nowadays rupee is also being included as a interbank network security measures that are being taken in a atm network atm networks implement various security net measures to protect the user information and transactions this include the encryption of data during communication the physical security of uh, the atms and also monitoring for the suspicious activities so all in all in a summary an atm network acts as an interface between atms and the core banking systems facilitating secure and real time financial transactions for account holders it enhances banking accessibility by allowing users to perform transactions at the atms across different locations and banks so with that we come to the end of today's session if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them in the comment section below your feedback is very valuable to us and this is nishan signing off from brilliant bankers do like share and subscribe our channel jai hind